हेलो स्टूडेंट्स ऑफ इलेवेंथ क्लास आवर टॉपिक टुडे इज लाइक लाइक द टर्म लाइक वॉज फॉर द फर्स्ट टाइम यूज बाय थियोफेस्टस Theophrastus to denote superficial growth of small plant like organisms on tree barks theophrastus observed some small plant like organisms the superficial growth on tree barks the superficial growth of these small plant like organisms on tree barks then Murison, M U R I S O N, Murison, 1699, termed these plants as muscophagus. He termed these plants as muscophagus. Presently. there is a very sizable a very good number of lichens there are almost 400 genera and 15000 even more than 15000 species of lichens and the study of lichens is called as lichenology lichenology eric acairis eric acairis a c h a r i u s acairis is considered as father of lichenology like an olive this is introduction of lichens for the first time these were observed by theophrastus on tree barks then murison called these plants and mus uh, as muscophagus presently there are about 5 400 genera and 15000 species of lichen is known the study of lichens is known as lichenology and eric acairis is considered as father of lichenology now let us discuss what these lichens are actually dear students lichens are intimate symbiotic intimate symbiotic associations between and alga and a fungus if i will tell you that these lichens are peculiar type of organisms they are dual organisms which consist of two parts in their body an algal part and a fungal part both these parts form an intimate relationship 
form an intimate association. So intimate is the association between the alga and fungus in lichens that it is very difficult to ascertain whether there are two organisms within them. Whether there are two organisms within them. So intimate is the association between the algal part and the fungal part. These are basically lichens. Lichens are intimate symbiotic associations between an alga and a fungus. So intimate is the association between the two parts, that is algal part and fungal part, that it is very difficult to ascertain that there are two organisms within them. The algal part, if I will tell you, is called as phycobiont. Phycobiont. While as the fungal part is called as mycobiont. Mycobiont. The algal part is called as phycobiont and the fungal part is called as mycobiont. Let us now discuss the general characters of these lichens. General characters of lichens. General characters. Let us discuss some general characters of lichens. Number one. These lichens are slow growing perennial plants. Slow growing perennial plants. Slow growing perennial plants. Perennial plants. Slow growing perennial plants. You might have heard in your earlier classes or in uh, some other chapter, morphology of flowering plants that plants may be, you know, annuals, biennials, perennials. Here, these lichens are perennial plants, which are slow growing plants. And they occur in those habitats which are usually, you know, inhospitable. Inhospitable. And which are usually uninhabited, uninhabited. What does that mean? That means here in such, you know, habitats, other living organisms, other types of plants face difficulties. But lichens can grow in these inhospitable and uninhabited, uh, you know, uh, these habitats such as barren rocks. Barren rocks. You can find lichens on barren rocks. You can find lichens on sand, growing on sand. You can find lichens growing on, you know, woods. Decaying woods, decaying logs, decaying leaves. Okay? These are some areas which are otherwise inhospitable, which are otherwise uninhabited. But like it is grow on sand, like it is grow on you know stones, rocks, like it is grow on you know, decaying leaves. Okay. But you can also find lichens in water also. Water. Both fresh water and marine water. Fresh water and marine water. Sometimes lichens are also, you know, classified on the basis of their habitat, such as those lichens which grow on rocks and sand are called as sex coals, sex coals. 
those lichens which grow on tree barks, tree barks, they are called as corticoles, corticoles. Those lichens which grow on wooden logs, wooden logs, they are called as lignocoles are lignocolous lichens and those lichens which simply grow on soil those are known as pericoles pericoles are pericolous lichens these are various types of lichens on the basis of the place where they live if they live, if they are present on rocks and sand, the lichens are called as saxicoles or sagicolous lichens. If they are found on tree box, then they are called as corticoles or corticolous lichen. When they are found present on, you know, wooden logs, then they are called as lignocoles. When they occur on soil, they are called as pterygoles. But as I already told you, these lichens can also occur, you, you know, in water, both in fresh water and the marine water. And one thing which I must tell you, that lichens are very old in Arctic region, Arctic region, some lichens are found, which are almost 4,500 years old. But you must always remember that lichens neither resemble fungi nor they resemble algae. Though they are formed by both uh, these, uh, the combination of both these alga, algae and fungi. But they don't resemble either of the two. Okay? This is number one general character of lichens. Let us come to the second general character of lichen. As I told you little while ago that a lichen has two parts. Two parts. Algal part and the fungal part. Algal part is called as Phycobiont. Phycobiont. While as fungal part is called as mycobiont. This algal part belongs to which type of alga? There are many types of alga. You might be knowing that alga are present in three kingdoms. You can see algae in kingdom Monera, blue green algae whom you call cyanobacteria also. You can see uh, algae in kingdom protista. Uh, protistan algae. Protistan algae. Such as dinoflagellates, diatoms, iglinides. Okay? Then, uh, uh, kingdom planti. Uh, there are also algae. Green algae, red algae, brown algae. Which type of algae occur in lichens. That I am telling you. Phycobiont. If there is a, an algal part in lichens, to which algae this algal part of lichens belongs? I am telling you that this part belongs to, which is known as phycobiont. Phycobiont belongs to either green algae, green algae, or Blue-green algae, cyanobacteria, cyanobacteria, okay, green algae. And in green algae, you can see genus Caladophora is usually present in the association of lichens. And in blue-green algae, you can see genus Nostoc is usually found in association of lichens. Okay? This is about phycobiont. But you must 
uh, remember that with the passage of time, with new you know investigations and observation, now blue green algae, which are also called as cyanobacteria, they are no more called as you know blue green algae. They are considered as blue green bacteria. Okay, so we can call the algal part of lichen on phycobiont only if it belongs to the you know green algae if it belongs to cyanobacteria okay then it is appropriate to call the algal part of the fungus you know as photobiont photobiont this is photobiont because blue green algae are no more algae they are now considered as blue green bacteria some workers are of the opinion that it is inappropriate to call blue green algae as blue green algae because they are prokaryotic so it is suggested that they must be called as blue green bacteria or the usual name given to them cyanobacteria and if it is the case, I am telling you that then it is appropriate to call the algal part of the lichens as photobiont. Photobiont. Uh, there is some uh, research, uh, there is some investigation. I am telling you, uh, 21 genera of green algae and 12 genera of cyanobacteria take part in association of lichens. Sometimes it's asked what is the percentage of cyanobacteria and what is the percentage of green algae in lichen association. I am telling you that it has been sorted out that 21 genera of green algae are also associated associated with lichens okay and dual genera of cyanobacteria are seen in association with lichens in lichens okay now come to the mycobiont mycobiont is the fungal part okay this fungal part usually belongs to ascomycetes and on the basis of these uh, ascomycetes the lichens are called as ascolichens the lichens are called as ascolichens only in few cases fungal part belongs to you know fungi imperfecti and basidiomycetes Usually, in majority of cases, fungal part belongs to ascomycetes. 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 And it's the reason why ascomycetes are considered, it's the reason why those lichens in which the fungal part belongs to ascomycetes are called as ascolichens. Are called as as now, let us see in third point, what are the functional functions of these two, you know, parts. Alga being photosynthesizing uh, prepares food by the process of photosynthesis. It utilizes it for its growth and development and also supplies food to the fungal part you know fungus because you know fungus is heterotropic it can't manufacture its own food it doesn't show photosynthesis it's saprotrop so it takes food manufactured by algal part by the process of photosynthesis and in return fungal part what it does it absorbs moisture, it absorbs water, minerals from the soil and supplies these water, minerals 
to algal power. Hence, we say that this is a symbiotic association, an association in which both of the partners are equally benefited. Okay, this is number second, you know, uh, characteristic of alga. Uh, this lichens. Come to the third characteristic, general character of lichens. The nature of this, you know, association between algae and fungi in lichens is still not clearly understood. There is some, you know, confusion between the workers regarding the nature of association between algal part and fungal part in lichens. Some workers are of the opinion that this association between algal part and fungal part is a parasitic association. They consider this fungus as a parasite on alga in lichens and derives food from alga part. One viewpoint, one school of thought, a group of workers consider, you know, fungal this uh, association between fungus and algae, alga in lichens as a parasitic association, parasitism, while in which fungus is considered as parasite and it derives food from the algal part. But another school of thought, other group of workers are of the opinion that the association between an alga and fungus okay, is a true symbiotic relationship in which both of the two organisms, alga and fungus, are equally benefited. They consider this symbiotic association as what they consider it as consortium, if I will tell you, that husband-wife like relationship, companions, in which both of them are, you know, equally benefited. This is consortium. Companions. How? Husband and wife. Husband and wife. Like relationship. In likers. Some workers are of the opinion that the association between alga and fungus in likers is like a consortium. They say that this is like husband and wife relationship. That means they, algal part and fungal part, live together as companions and hence they are equally benefited from this association. But one more school of thought, still other group of you know workers are of the opinion that the benefits of this association in lichens between alga and fungus are heavily in favor of fungi. They, can, this, they are of the opinion that this association is a master-slave-like association. A master-slave-like association. Master slave like association in which fungi, I mean fungus, is considered as master and alga is considered as slave. They say that the benefits of, of this association are heavily in favor of you know fungus. 
Hence they consider fungus as master. While as alga derives very little or no benefit is from this association. They say master slave relationship is seen in lichens between alga and fungus. Alga and fungus. Okay. So these, these are some, you know, uh, general characters of lichens. And when, when, when a master and slave relationship was given by some workers, they were of the opinion that if algal part is separated experimentally from the lichens, it can grow alone. But if fungal part, if fungal part is separated experimentally from lichens, fungal part cannot grow alone. So, from this, you know, point, they are of the opinion that the fungal part benefits heavily from this association. Okay. Now, come to the fourth or fifth point. Which I am telling you. These alg uh, uh, lichens, they are, you know, pigmented. They are pigmented. They can be green, they can be grey, red, orange, and sometimes they can be dark brown, brown, and white also. They are pigmented. Is the reason why uh, these lichens were used in dye industries earlier. We will discuss this separately in economic importance of lichens. So, lichens are pigmented. They can be green, they can be brown, dark brown, blue, white, orange, color. Okay? This one more character. Let's come to their reproduction. You know, uh, lichens show vegetative reproduction, asexual reproduction, and sexual reproduction. Three types of all the three types of reproduction shown by lichen. Which is, during vegetative reproduction, small and tiny parts, which are known as soridia. So, Ridia, okay, detached from the parent body and these Soridia later on develop into new lichens. During which state of reproduction, very small, tiny fragments break off from the parent body. These small or tiny fragments of lichens are called as Soridia. When they break off from the parent body, they can later on develop into new lichens. But one thing you must remember, that a soridium, a small fragment or a tiny part, must possess both algal, uh, algal component and fungal component. Then and only then, this soridium can develop into new like, okay, come to the vegetarian uh, asexual reproduction. Lichens show asexual reproduction by forming asexual spores such as oidia, pignidia, etc. These spores germinate to form new lichens. Okay, then come to the sexual reproduction. You must remember here, sexual reproduction in lichens is only shown by fungal part, mycobiome. I will tell you that sexual reproduction occurs only in fungal part of the lichens. And sexual reproduction takes place by the formation of sex organs and 
in sex organs, you know, sexual spores are formed. Sexual spores are formed. These sexual spores are formed in lichens, in special structures, called as apothecia, special structures, and perithecia, apothecia and perithecia. These are special structures in which sexual spores are formed. Okay? These sexual spores can develop into new lichens when they come in contact with the algal part. When they come in contact with the algal part. This is reproduction of lichens. Students, this is all today. In our next, next lecture, we will discuss economic importance of lichens and also various types of lichens. Thank you. Have a nice day. Okay.